Hey, how you doing? This is Craig Beck. Welcome back in. It's Persuasion University. Today we're talking about the law of social proof. It's another old but tried and tested technique. Works extremely well, works on you every day, works on everyone you know every day. And very easy to prove as well. Have you ever seen a queue of people waiting to get in a store? Doesn't it make you intrigued? And you're like, what's going on there? What are the queue? What's so good that they're willing to queue for it? And you, you want to find out, even though you didn't come out to go to that store, that store probably doesn't sell anything that interests you, but you're still interested because other people say what this store has got is worth me waiting for. It's valuable. And we hate to think that we're going to miss out because that's law of scarcity. But law of social proof is when people demonstrate it to us. Maybe you've seen people, you know, queuing at a velvet rope and you've been like, Ooh, what's going on there? There's a great scene, actually, that demonstrates social proof in the um, TV comedy, a British TV uh, comedy series called Extras with Ricky Gervais. And he goes into a nightclub and he spots all the famous celebrities in the VIP area of the nightclub, which is basically just a cornered off section of the club with a bit of velvet rope around it. So he goes up to the doorman, the bouncer who's protecting this area and says, I'm famous, let me in. And the doorman says, well, I've never heard of you, mate, so you can't come in. So in the end, Andy Millman, the character, has to bribe this doorman a couple of hundred quid to let him into the VIP area. And there's a great funny moment where he sits down and realizes it's exactly the same as the rest of the club, except it's got a velvet rope in front of it. Pure social proof. And it's a very powerful, motivating technique. So the question has to be, how do we use social proof in our compliance techniques, in our creative writing, in our pitches, in our presentations? Well, basically, what you're trying to do here to invoke social proof is to demonstrate that other people find your product, service or idea valuable. Because we like to follow the crowd generally. And if other people say it's valuable, then we tend to defer to their opinion. You may have found yourself at a, I don't know if you've had, have had this experience where you go to a really expensive restaurant, like a Michelin starred restaurant, and you sit down and you're horrified to see that there are four knives, four spoons, four forks, and you're thinking, oh my God, which one goes with which course? And most people will have a little look around at the other dinner guests and go, okay, so this one goes with the fish, this one goes with the meat, I see. We just assume that everyone else knows better than us. It's part of our programming. It's not a weakness. It's not something that only weak-willed people do or people low in confidence. It's just a part of the human mentality. We assume other people know better. So we look at other people and follow them. And there are loads of really conclusive experiments uh, that you can find online uh, that have been done over the years where they've, they've taken people off the street and put them into a room and, and had them look at lengths of string, that all, all these lengths of string were the same length. But because they had like 10 actors in the room as well, all agreeing that the third one was shorter, the person who came in off the street also agreed, generally, that the third one was shorter, even though it was blatantly obviously the same length. This is the power of social proof. So, for example, to use this in your presentations, or on your online uh, sales process, if you have a website or if you're doing emailing of your clients, then testimonials are a fantastic way of uh, demonstrating social proof. Especially if you can go above and beyond uh, the, what people normally do. Normally it's just kind of a silhouette of a man or a woman, few words, name, location, could be made up, you never really know, do you? If you can get a genuine picture um, to go with it, then it adds a little bit of credibility. If you can get a video testimonial, oh my God, they're like gold dust. Really, really powerful. I have a problem in this, you see, because I run a website called stopdrinkingexpert.com and it's helped thousands of people to stop drinking. And it works so well because it's based on what I went through to deal with my own drinking. And maybe 50,000 people have now quit with my help. But getting testimonials is very, very difficult because nobody really wants their name associated with an alcohol addiction website, do they? So it's very difficult. And I'm very, very grateful when people do send me a testimonial and say I can use it. I'm always chuffed and thrilled when they do that. But when they send me a video that they've made, oh, my God, I almost wet my pants with excitement on that one. 
I've had about three in 10 years, I think, three video testimonials. For someone to put their face, voice and image, you know, towards this product uh, is just incredible. Um, but it's very, very powerful. You know, if you can put a video testimonial on your website, there can be no doubt that this is a real person who's really tried it and really had success. Super powerful. So try and get testimonials into your pitches and presentations and on your website as much as possible because they have untold value. Now, let's skip back to the previous lesson. We were talking about the law of scarcity. And I told you in that video that in this one, I will tell you that if you combine the law of scarcity with another tool, it creates dynamite, persuasion dynamite. And it is the law of social proof. If you can combine the law of scarcity with the law of social proof, you create something that I would put as close to being irresistible as possible. I don't believe anyone can resist this leverage, this amount of persuasion technique when you combine these two together, because you don't just get the addition of two rules. You get far more than the sum of the parts. Now, I discovered this through a very painful process. I'll tell you about it now. It's, we're going back quite a few years now, and I was, uh, I was dating a woman, and I was mad into her. I was head over heels in love with her. I mean, ridiculously, embarrassingly in love with her. Um, apparently, she didn't feel the same because <laughs> she had that conversation with me. You know, we need to talk. Oh, no, no, no. Why? No, no, not talking. So she sat me down and she gave me the old, yeah, it's not you, it's me business. And I thought, yeah, 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 whatever. Anyway, so she dumped me. I know, right? How could she? And my friends came around and they gave me the old, you know, oh, there's plenty more fish in the sea business. It's her loss. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, but I don't want to fish. I want her, only her. You know how it feels when someone dumps you like that? You don't want to go dating. You don't want anyone else. You just want the thing that's been restricted from you. Law of scarcity. Anyway, skip forward two, three weeks. I'm, I'm kind of getting over it now. I'm moving on with my life. And uh, I go out shopping. I'm in the mall. And what do I see? I see my ex happy, laughing, holding hands with another guy, occasionally stopping for a bit of a kiss. It's like the most painful thing that you can ever experience. You've got the law of scarcity. We all want what we can't have. So this is restricted to me and I'm not allowed it. So that's already kicking me. And now the law of social proof. She's demonstrating to me that she is of value. This guy who she's with, she, he sees great value in this woman. So now I've got the combination of the law of scarcity and the law of social proof at the same time, and the effect is devastating. So if you can combine scarcity and social proof, i.e. this is hard to get hold of, or this is in limited supply, and everyone wants it, wow, you're in a very powerful persuasion situation there. Okay, let's leave the video there for today. As usual, listen to the audio track as homework. I will see you back here tomorrow for the next part of Persuasion University. Thanks for watching.